Welcome to Talent Takeover Unfiltered. When it comes to working hard and keeping it real, we know our shit. Self-care, happiness, inner peace, and time. I'm Brianna Rooney, and this is Taylor Bradley. Hey, y'all. And we have thrived in chaos and turned it into an art form. So, Taylor, what are we doing here today? We're here to give you a raw, under-the-hood view of all things recruiting and finally give credit where credit is due to a long, underrated industry that's full of, quote-unquote, experts. All right. Well, then let's take this show to the road. Hello. Welcome to Talent Takeover Unfiltered with your mm-hmm. one and only Taylor Bradley. Woo! <laughs> have you Drink. seen those? Well, you're not really on Instagram, but have you seen those memes where it's like, um, this is what my wife looks like with her Yeti and they've got those big ass dumpsters or with her no. Stanley and it's like you're <laughs> carrying a dumpster around and there's like a pool noodle in it. Because oh, they're I, just this massive ass cup, you know? I, I got to look at that. Actually, just recently, Diego, um, it's like, you know, what's up with this Stanley thing? They're so expensive. I don't know why everyone is so trendy with Stanley. And I was like, thank you for not wanting to be trendy at age 10. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm like, it's a cup. It was gifted to me. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't have spent that money. But I'm going to send you this thing. I die yeah. laughing about it. It's these women just pulling a big trash can down the street. It's like my mom with her Stanley. And she's got her purse in this big trash can. <laughs> It's hilarious. Oh my God. I love this. Okay. So <laughs> hello everyone. We'll get to it. I swear. Uh, this is going to be, this is kind of off a whim, um, just from our, our last podcast that we just, we just yeah. did. This is all going to be about why you need to use AI in your, in your while you're interviewing, like while you're looking yeah. for a job, there's so many things. And we're actually going to divulge that. Unfortunately, Taylor and I don't actually work together on the regular. Anymore. So anymore. Yes. Um, which is sad, but we will reunite eventually. Still <laughs> besties. We still, get, we still, still love each this. other. Yeah, we still get to do this. We still get to see you. You, you know, see you either on the Millionaire Recruiter YouTube or you know, just as yeah. listen to us um, every single week. So we're there for that. Yeah, and if um, I would be interested if our listeners want want to know how that story happened. There's, it's not a bad story, but just no, want to no. know how that journey evolved. Um, we'd be happy to share that with you guys, but, um, we'll just, you got to give us some reviews, comments, and let us know if you want to, want to know more. Um, yeah. cause there is, the it, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's some interesting, the T right. There's some interesting components there. Um, but yeah, using AI in your interview process, I feel like is going to be critical in today's job market. I mean, uh, like applications that I'm seeing are just novels that you have to write. It's no longer, you know, the questions that I touched on in in one of our other podcasts of like, are you 18 years of age or older? Can you legally work in the United States? Like those standard questions that you're going to get asked in every application. But these are like ones that really align with the job description. Like what has been your experience implementing ERP systems? Like very detailed questions that it should be an interview question, like yeah. if you're talking to a person, but they're asking that at the point of the application. And so I think it's absolutely critical for candidates to use chat GPT to help you answer some of these questions. Like you're going to use chat GPT a lot and we'll talk further about that. But this is one area where it could save you a significant amount of time because they're pretty lengthy. Some of these applications can take hours to complete. And it's like you're writing an essay. Wow. Okay. So when you were going through these, these applications, did you mm-hmm. like copy and paste? Like, let's just say like a, one, a company is asking the same exact questions. Would you do yeah. a copy and paste or would you put into chat GPT, like the new company you're applying for to make it sound more for them? Or how did you handle that? Yeah. So, I mean, I, what I will say is like, I use chat GPT a lot and I will type in I'll word different, I'll word the same thing different ways to see what the results come back with. So there wasn't like one single way that I did it. I, I did put in company information. I did put like in hypothetically, if it was like, have you implemented an ERP system or tell us about your experience implementing an ERP system, then you could put something in chat GPT. That's like, what are the steps to implementing an ERP system? And it's just going to, it's even if you've done those things, it's yeah. going to write out for you what those steps would be. So um, I make it, it's it's like less specific to the company and more specific to the question that I'm answering. And then, you know, I, I don't a hundred percent like just copy and paste what I get from chat GPT. Um, but it just gives me a starting point of like, yeah, that was hypothetically again, that was my experience implementing an ERP system. I did start with step one, step two, like these are the stages that I went into or implementing an applicant tracking system, whatever it is. Um, it'll give you some basic responses and then you can kind of make that your own. Um, but then there are ones that were like specific to 
how does your mission align with our mission? And like, mm -hmm. then, you know, you would have to put in like the mission of the company and stuff like that. So I think if it's more about your skills or tell us about a time when you did X, Y, Z, it's easier to use chat GPT that way. Um, and get just a quick answer. But I think if it's going to be specific to the company and your alignment with the company in certain situations or, you know, their stance on things, then you're going to have to put in some company information, but play around with it. I will, I will put the same question, but just worded differently in chat GPT multiple times just to mm -hmm. see what it gives me. And it's always different results. Yeah, I, I love that. And so like I, I go two different ways. Like one, if I'm like feeling super creative or it's just like something that's like really near and dear to me, like I'll yeah. write it first then put it in chat GPT and then ask, Hey, give me five different, f five different ways to say this, maybe shorter or maybe longer. Yeah. Or like how, how yeah. we want to roll that or maybe with more sentiment, maybe funnier, maybe more professional, like all those yeah. things. Right. But then other times what I liked what you said is like, sometimes you're just kind of like staring at this question and being like, God damn, where do I even start? It's like the writer's yes. block. Yeah. And it also feels emotional because it's a job search, which yeah. is emotional. And so, yeah. So having it start, and then you'd be like, oh, okay, like I, I can take it from here or, or I'll take half of this or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but something to note is because this has been kind of controversial is some people are using um, like these apps to figure out if it was AI generated. And so that's something to note, like, hey, look, you don't want to just grab bot to bot, right? Yeah, uh, but but it's you know so put your spin on it. It's it's again not here to replace you. It's not here to cheat, right? Because that was yeah. this other thing. Like, hey, are you allow are you allowing applicants to use Chat GPT? Well, it's like wait, let's think about this for a second. How long has there been resume writers? Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? Someone yeah. wrote this other person's resume and they paid for it for a human being, and yet I use Chat GPT to help me out. Yeah, I think I don't know if we think about this realistically that the amount of, if we're talking about TA professionals, the amount of applicants that any one company is getting, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to check if all of those people put their answers in chat GPT, yeah. you know, like there's no way, but what I will say is like their top applicants, they could check those, but I still think you should have incorporate some, some personal aspects there. Like I'm a person, as you know, like I don't like to write. It doesn't come easy to me. It's mm -hmm. something that I sit here and I'll just be like, It'll take me all day to write something, but it'll be good. What I'll deliver will be good, but it's just because it takes me all day. I'll do multiple iterations. Like it's not, it's not a, something. And that's something that I would love to work on and get better at, but it doesn't yeah. come easy for me. But whenever I use chat GPT, I still do my own version of what it's telling me. You know what I mean? I put my own spin on it, but it helps get the creative juices going of like, mm -hmm. okay, whenever I implemented the applicant tracking system, like it's telling me you know, in chat GPT, here's the steps that you take to do that. Okay. Here's, here's where, how I personally did that. Here's where, you know, what my experience was doing that. I think mm -hmm. it have to personalize it. Um, I, I mean, a hundred percent. That'd be, it, that'd be ridiculous. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, there shouldn't be a way that they could just like copy and paste an answer in chat GPT. And that's like, that's your answer. And it's also like, if you haven't actually done that, what's the reality going to be your reality going to be when you start the job, if you really don't have that experience to draw from and use chat GPT as a starting point, like you're just plagiarizing an answer. What happens when they ask you to do that as part of the job after you get it, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But I do think for our listeners, like it's very, very important to spend more time answering those questions, those application questions, because that's what's going to set you apart from other candidates. There's mm -hmm. thousands of applicants having just been there myself. Like I, I know that and posted a role myself and I got 1500 applicants. And I remember I was telling you, I was yes, like in was shock. Insane. I had like 300,000, um, impressions. That's I have still in my LinkedIn, cause I haven't been able to go through them all 1700 connection requests, 1700 that... from posting a job that was maybe and just up, once, like, right? Week, just once. That is so insane. It's so crazy. And, and and I would never do this, but trust me, I wanted to. I wanted to post a job just for shits and giggles because when when you told me that, I was like, there's no way. Like how like how did that just happen? Now I, I wouldn't do that because that's fake, but I, I wanted to see it. Yeah. Because I it's just, just bonkers. Um, I mean, I screenshotted it and showed it to yeah, you. Like no, it wasn't I, like I know I like, but I wanted to test it. I'm like, no, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not like, I, I've never seen anything like it. And then, you know, and not that this is what I'm going for, but like, I had this moment where I was like, oh my God, this is just an indication of this job market. Like this is because it got me gained or I gained like, I don't know. I want to say like over 3000 more followers on LinkedIn wow. in a matter of days. 
and like 300,000 post impression. I was like, oh my God, it's rough in TA right now. Like this is, mm -hmm. this is a big, and then the messages, I had thousands of messages and I read every single one. It took wow. me a while, but I read every single one. I got back where I could, but it was, I had to turn off commenting. I mean, it's, I it's rough out that. there. So wow. go bringing it back to the yeah. subject. Like I think people need to spend a lot of time answering those questions on the application, because if you think that your resume is what's going to make you stand out and you're just like trying to enter whatever you have to, to just get to the submit part on the application, you're really doing yourself a disservice because in my experience, what I've seen recently, people pay more attention to how you answer those questions, especially if they're written like interview questions. You know, like tell me about yourself or tell me about your experience implementing an applicant trapping tracking system. You have to be detailed in that because that's what's going to get you the interview. They probably won't even look at your resume. They'll look at like at first, they'll look at those questions, then look mm -hmm. at your resume. But that's going to be like your first in. So did you use any of like the LinkedIn AI that they have right now? You know, like how to like write the message or any kind of templates? Like, did you do anything like that? To write them what message? Um, to write like a message, like when you uh, when you send your application, like did you then write like the TA leader a message? Did you do no. anything there? I okay, didn't do straight. anything there because, and I'll tell you why. Because I personal experience, and then like what experience that I've heard from others, it's overwhelming to have people reach out to you. Like that's that's what I got is like fifteen hundred people, and I mean they're not all qualified. Like yeah. all these messages I got. And so it's like, yeah, you may have sent this amazing message that maybe I saw like not until later, you know what I mean? Like it didn't, it yeah. didn't set their candidacy apart because I was getting so many messages. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, we're talking about TA. That's what we do. We're TA professionals. Maybe if it was like a CFO role or something, you know, where you're not going to get thousands of applicants, but like if it's a TA job or a recruiter role, you're going to get thousands of applicants. And there wasn't, I mean, there were some messages that I was like, oh, that's cute. Like that's, you know, that they put mm -hmm. a little spin on it. But I mean, a lot of people, this is a one you'll be interested in. A lot of people regurgitated their resume in, in message. the LinkedIn messages. Yeah. So not only did they attach it, but they just like, here's what all I've done. Like, and I get it. Like you're trying so hard to ensure that you're, you get seen for this. But also, you know, I mean, you're the one that would know this better than anybody or feel this better than anybody who wants to read a novel email or in mail. Nobody does. And so that's another thing where it's like, if people are going to write a message, it's like, you have to write something that's going to make you stand out. I got a lot of just the, I'm interested in your TA role. Can we set up um, a chat or a time to chat to discuss? And it's like, do you know how many of those I got? Yeah. And it's like nothing different about it nothing different about it. Some of those didn't even attach a resume or anything. It was just like, I, yeah, like, no, like doing the bare minimum. So I don't think you need to go super, super above and beyond and waste your time. That's the other thing I will say is that I think some of this stuff can be a waste of time whenever you're talking about companies that are getting thousands of applicants. Like it really, from a recruiter perspective, if you're a recruiter, you've been there where maybe you work for a company that leaves jobs open for a long time. Oh yeah. Evergreen roles. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. or not evergreen. They just leave them open just for a long time. Yeah. And it's really overwhelming to have thousands and thousands of candidates to go through. But I do think if you're going to, you know, try to set yourself apart somehow, it would be like in those application questions or maybe send a, you could send a LinkedIn message. I'm going to tell you probably most people won't read it. People were at, at the company that I worked at, people were surprised that I actually read them all. Yeah, that's wild. I, I wouldn't have. That's a, I'm not worthy on that one for you. <laughs> no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't respond to all of them, but I read them because I want, I truly wanted to make sure like we got some great talent, you got but exactly it's exactly who you needed. Well, yeah. So a, another thing in, in AI is, is Grammarly. So, you yeah. know, Grammarly, yes, yes. Grammarly at one point was just like straight up, you know, help me sound better, you know, help me yeah, sure yeah. that there's no, you know, anything. But Grammarly now has an amazing AI, whereas you can actually even put the kind of sentiment you want. So like, let's just say like in your messages, in, in um, your responses to the questions and your resume, all those things, you can have Grammarly over, uh, go over it and you can say, hey, I want this to have a direct tone. I want this to have a friendly tone. I want this to sound more aggressive. Like, let's just say like aggression's kind of like, you know, you're, you're maybe a passive person, but you want this sales role. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, guess what? Passive people don't win that game, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so you can actually change the sentiment on that via AI, which I think is like insanely powerful. 
And yeah. it's, it's, it, um, it's not that you're trying to be someone that you're not necessarily. It's more of a like, how can I get that look? Because I know that's what you're looking for. I know I can do the job, but maybe that's not in my nature to write like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I want to see that. I'd be interested to see because I would like, I feel like that could be such a great thing if it's like internal communications that you have with people where maybe it's feedback. Cause I actually have worked with somebody that got this feedback that they're just like too just short. And it's, it's comes from their military background. Like they spent oh, a significant yeah. amount of time in the military. And so they're just like in their messaging and communication, like not a lot of pleasantries, just like straight to the point. And it, it sometimes can rub people the wrong way. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, because it's not, it's not at all how this person is. They're not sure. It's just how they come off in writing. So I think that's where, like, if you're working on your internal communications and how you commu communicate with others, something like that could be beneficial, but I'd be curious to see, see what the output is. And like, if I'd want to use something like that, because if it, I would want to see if it takes something that's like really, really dry, if that's mm -hmm. how this person is, and then turns it into something like fluffy and amazing Pleasant. or super like, Yep. That is just not at all who they are. Yeah. Well, at the very least, it sh will show you the tone. It will yeah. It will literally say, hey, is this too direct? Is this lacking, you know, friendliness? And that's a good way to use it. Like, yeah. to me, that would be like the ideal way to use it. Of like, if I'm writing this, does this, do I sound like a fucking bitch? Yeah. Saying <laughs> do I sound like a crazy person? Yes. Yeah. Like, is this <laughs> too bitchy would be like yeah. what I would use that for. A hundred percent. Another way that I don't think it's talked about enough. And, and although like you guys are watching this on the Millionaire Recruiter or maybe just listening to it, but we're not showing you it. However, if you're on LinkedIn, their AI, you can go on jobs. So you can like, let's just say you're applying for a job. Mm -hmm. You can go all the way to the bottom and it's going to generate what skills essentially you're lacking that this job oh, yeah. description wants. Mm -hmm. And I think people really miss that because you can have up to 50 skills on your thing. So before applying, make the bot check your LinkedIn profile to make sure that it's going to match with this. Because if you're missing six out of the 10 skills, guess what? You're probably not even going to get looked at. Like you mm -mm. won't even be in that batch that comes in like the top 20%. Like that's not happening. So adjust okay. things, let the AI bot go through that. And then additionally, back to your chat GPT thing, it's like put your, paste your resume in chat GPT, paste the job description in chat GPT and ask that bot, what am I missing? So yeah. you can do like, and, and that, that's, what's cool about AI is it can check you. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, don't wreck yourself Yeah, yes. before you check yourself. Thank you. Well, and I think that like, I mean, AI is really what I feel like we could talk a lot further about, because I know there's been all this hype about, you know, AI is going to replace recruiters and AIs. And I mean, it totally, in some aspects, I will say has like my personal experience with it having been on you know the employer side and then the candidate side of like using a video interviewing tool yes um that was that was a first for me where i had to interview and i was asked questions that were exactly like the questions that you would be asked in an interview exact questions and i had a little clock at the bottom with like 60 seconds and it's like counting down I'm like oh shit you know it's very it's very stressful. And from a candidate experience standpoint, and I've provided, I did provide that feedback. Like it's, it wasn't a great candidate experience. I think that there is a way to use AI in your interview process. It's not like the first step. Cause I had never talked to anybody and then had an AI interview. And I don't know. I feel like again, companies can get away with things that they couldn't before because there's so there's just an abundance of talent available and yeah. so many people just trying to, to get these jobs. It goes back to the, what you and I've talked about before assignments. The assignments they give uh -huh. candidates, like we're back there. We're back there. We're like, it's an employer's world right now. And we're just living in it. And they can ask all kinds of crazy things of you. And if you're not willing to do it, somebody else will, you know, that's just the way the world is going. I've seen it in more mm -hmm. times than I can count here lately is those application questions that are like an essay that you have to write and, um, you know, incorporating AI into your process. Now, from the other side of it, I'm like, okay, I get it because it saves me so much time if I've got thousands of applicants because it will tell me like how they scored on those questions that they were asked. Mm -hmm. Now, I listen to all of the answers. I do because it's, I feel like there's just, 
with tech, there can always be in, you know, with bots, I just feel like there's always room for interpretation of like what the person actually means versus like what, how they're being scored. Right. And so I did watch them all, but most of it was pretty spot on of like, here's the answer they gave. How does their answer align with the question that we're asking? And so it did make it significantly easier. Another thing that was asked there, that's a big one. And it can be asked in a pre-screen question or in the AI interview is your salary expectations. Mm. Like there's nothing, every recruiter knows this. Like it sucks to get on a call with um, a candidate, especially the more senior, the role, you know, you're talking hour long phone screens okay. and you don't lead the call with like, what are your salary expectations? That's like the last question that you ask. And so it sucks to have like a conversation for an hour with a candidate, maybe fall in love with them. And then their comp expectations are completely misaligned with the budget that, or the range you have for the role. Yeah. And so I do think there are parts of where automation and AI are beneficial in the recruitment process. I don't think they're going to ever replace recruiters because the feedback that, companies get on AI video interviews is not great. Um, but I do think that you have to start embracing technology, which was like, actually my broke to boss tip is like AI, you know, I know there was this hype about AI replacing recruiters and all of that, but I think it's, it's never going to do that, but it is going to replace certain parts of the process. And the, mm -hmm. the more that you know how to use it and the more well-versed you are in AI, chat, G, all these things, it's just going to help your candidacy that much more. You know, that was actually a question that I got asked in an interview was like, how do you incorporate chat GPT, um, in your recruitment process or in your process when working mm -hmm. on a role or whatever. And so it's, it's coming up in interviews even. So I think everybody should AI is your friend. You need to be prepared to speak about it, get familiar with it. And it also just make your life so much fucking easier when you're having to write a bunch of stuff all the time or come up with answers that, you know, you probably used to spend a shit ton of time Googling, or I know I yep. did. Mm -hmm. So AI yeah, is your friend. Even and yeah, oh, I love that. I don't even want to speak after that. <laughs> like AI is your friend. Yeah. Uh, but just one thing, going back to, pre to prep, we were saying like the AI, you know, is interviewing you and, you know, and we'll talk about this in a, in a different subject because I'm helping train a bot do this, which is really fun. Um, but you have to prep, like who wants to talk to themselves on a video? Like talk about giving yourself anxiety. Like it's, it is more anxiety filled than I think talking to a human. It's because you're just looking at yourself, you're seeing a timer, you're freaking out. I mean, like, I can only imagine like, like how that like all vibes, especially with the 60 seconds, especially if like what you're saying, like, it's not a short answer. Like, like no, you know, how is this a 60 second thing? And it will and, cut you off and you can't uh, yeah. redo it. No. Yeah. I've, 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 I've seen them. And like, that's, what's <gasps> crazy. <laughs> so it's like, oh shit, fuck. I'm not done. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. I didn't know it was recording. Cause you hit the button when you're ready to answer. It's and no. you can't take it back. You, you can't, can't take it back. So prep prep, prep, prep for AI, use AI, you know, all that stuff. But um, do us a favor. You love this episode, share it with your friends for sure, but also comment because, you know, we have to keep talking about AI. We have to keep giving you, you know, ways to use it, ways to accept it, adopt it. Um, and, you know, right now a good AI bot at its high is 80% accurate at its high right now. It's about 50, 50 to 60% accuracy. So it's like, you also have to think about those things and you know, it's not replacing us. Like you said, yeah. it's our friend is enhancing us. Yeah. And it's, it. it's going to be something that is asked about in the interviews. Like it's going to, it's going to continue to be asked about like, how do you incorporate AI um, into your pro whatever job it is, insert a job. Mm -hmm. People are starting to ask those questions. It's not even just a recruiter. So I definitely think it's at the very least, get yourself familiar with how you use these. Like I've talked to people that don't even know how like where to start where do i start with chat gpt i know you have to know like play around in there do yourself that favor love it thank you taylor thank you Thanks, all see you next tuesday